I'm Connor Peterson from Yig TV. I'm standing outside of Sanford House where the governor is about to give his opening address. I now have the honor to introduce the youth governor of the state of Minnesota, Mr. Elia Reed. Thank you, Sir Speaker. Let me take a moment and say welcome to the 59th Annual Youth in Government Model Assembly. I am honored to speak to you today as the Youth Governor, and I am bursting with confidence that the group I see today has a chance to change the world. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that the hard work and determination of this group will allow us to have the chance to see great things come to pass. The question is, is whether you are a bystander letting this assembly pass you by, or if you stand up for what you believe in and risk doing something truly amazing. Now it's been since 1946 that we have met and celebrated the opportunity that democracy presents us in this great country and in this great state. However, I question if we have ever seen an assembly so incredible, and I know for a fact that we have never seen one so large. So in a time when we face enormous obstacles as a country, when the economy and the war on terror have stretched partisan lines top across the country, people will question whether our generation has the fortitude and the drive and the persistence to do what it takes to make our country, once again, the shining star of democracy across the world. I'm here to tell you that I believe that we, as Minnesotans, are ready to lead the way into a new era of American politics, an era that we will define by the collaboration of its leaders, not for the betterment of the Democrats or the betterment of the Republicans, but for the betterment of the United States of America. Because this starts today. It starts with you and me here working not just for change, but now working for results. In this past election year, we took great steps as a state and as a country. With the elections coming to a close, we became the first state to defeat the amendment defining marriage as between a man and a woman. Other states went further legalizing the marriages of same-sex couples. And this issue is one that Emma and I feel incredibly strong about. The time is right. We have come to a point in state history where we can no longer restrict the citizens of our state's ability to marry whomever they love. Marriage is a fundamental right that we should not deny anyone based on their sexual preference. We support the legalization of gay marriage in the state of Minnesota, and we will forever be in opposition to legislature trying to restrict the fundamental rights of Minnesotans based on their gender, race, or sexual orientation in any form. Sadly, I speak that while our nation is still mourning the lost lives of the victims of the Newtown shooting, this horrific tragedy should serve as a wake-up call. We can no longer stand idly by as citizens of our state and of our nation are subjected to the terrible realities of gun violence. We must take steps to ensure that guns do not fall into the wrong hands. I urge you to work with me and everybody at this assembly to work towards passing legislation to create a safer environment within our homes and to add mental health screenings to prevent further atrocities from occurring in our country. Now, we all know that the base of any healthy society is a strong educational system. As Minnesotans, we can take pride in the fact that we are one of the top ranked states in the nation in regards to education. But, by no means does this mean we can sit back and relax because there are flaws in every system, and we must work better to improve education in any way plausible. Bills that promote responsible funding for schools are a priority. If we are to retain the fine arts programs that we hold so dear, 
Steps must be taken to ensure that our schools receive adequate funding in all districts across the state, rich and poor. That is our job, and I look forward to the solutions that you are able to present over these four days. Now, we believe that a healthy lifestyle should be promoted in schools or we'll be paying, we'll be paying for it later as the children that we do not educate about the dangers of obesity are raised and grew up with poor habits that we've seen today. And while debating education, remember that it must remain at the top of our agenda every year going forward, so we may retain the standard of academic excellence in Minnesota. With each passing election year, the issue of alternative energy continues to be brought up in a fierce partisan battle. Now, is the Lieutenant Governor and I's belief that this is a non-issue. There is no denying any longer that climate change exists. It is of great importance to me that we continue to support the alternative energy industry, stimulating growth and new jobs, and also working towards energy dependence, independence. We cannot, as a state, let this issue take the backseat any longer because it is imperative that we utilize all forms of alternative energy that are available to us, such as wind, solar, and hydro energy, as well as explore new areas, and we must restart the conversation about nuclear energy in Minnesota. Now, with that out of the way, by arriving here today, you've done something truly laudable. You're carrying on a tradition that spans generations what we do this week is important, and whatever message we put forth from this conference will be heard, I promise you. What you accomplish in these four days cannot stop when you leave, because we are the youth, and together, our collective voices cannot be ignored. While you are here, please, transcend the petty, pettiness of the partisan politics that you see in Washington. And let us join together for the benefit of this state that we all love. Throughout the conference, step out of your comfort zone and open yourself to new experiences and new situations. Because the memories that you create and the friends that you make have the potential to stay with you for many years to come. The greatest mistake you can possibly make is not speaking up. You'll regret it. The biggest mistake you can make is simply not making your voice heard. Now, delegates, it's time to live up to our potential. We have the numbers with nearly 1,700 delegates in the hotel. Now let us make this a model assembly that will be remembered. Thank you.